Hello everyone and welcome to the course of International Trade Theory Econ 446. I'm Yasser Saeed and today we are going to continue with Hacksher Allen model. Now in the previous lecture what we did was we covered the production possibility frontier and then we studied the relationship among output prices, input prices and the level of input. We somehow discussed about the relationship among output prices, input prices, the level of inputs and level of output. But today we are going to discover more about this learning goal. Then in the next lecture, we are going to cover trade in the hacksher Allen model. And finally, we will discuss about the income distribution and income inequality that occurs in the hacksher Allen model. Now what we have learned so far is that resources in each country are different. Each countries are endowed with different factors of production. Some have more labor, whereas some have more capital and others might have more agricultural land. Then again, factors of production can be used in multiple combination for specific level of output or production. For example, we discussed that for producing one calorie of food or for producing one meter of cloth, we can use different combinations of labor as well as land. Then again, the choice of output depends on relative prices. How much we should produce? That depends on the overall value of the output and that is uh, how we compared graphically by using the ISO value line. So ISO value line can determine the level of output on a specific production possibility frontier. Remember that the higher ISO value line means more value but any point on the specific line means that value does not change. Now here is another question that we can answer. Uh, we have discussed that production possibility frontier tells us how much we can produce in total. But the choice is then specified by the relative prices. The relative prices will tell us or the ISO value line will tell us how much we need to produce. But for that specific amount of production, what are the choices of combinations of the input how can we decide how much land should we allocate and how much labor should we allocate as we have already discussed in our previous example of uh, uh, the production of food that if we want to produce one unit of food or one calorie of food we have different combination of uh, land and labor that uh, we can use to produce that amount of food but which combination should we choose so here is the answer it depends on the prices of these inputs or we can say the factor prices the factor prices are wages and rent uh, that we pay wages for the labor and rent for the amount of land that we have occupied now let me remind you of the assumption about cloth and food that we had made earlier about their uh, intensity. We said that cloth is labor intensive whereas land uh, whereas food is land intensive. In order to produce one unit of, unit of food we need more land as compared to labor. But in order to produce one unit of cloth we need less land uh, per unit of labor so we can show that graphically uh, you can see here we have for example a wage rental ratio uh, w by r this is a wage rental ratio initially given to us so on this wage rental ratio how much land as compared to labor is required for the production of food that is given by T by 
L and we may call it T by L F. And how much do we require, how much land uh, relative to labor is required for production of cloth? That is, we can extend T by L, T by L for cloth. So, graphically, we can show you that food requires more land as compared to labor whereas cloth require less land as compared to labor now what we discussed here is that the wage rental ratio the w by r ratio decides how much of these factors should be chosen for example if wage to rent ratio increases what will happen wage to rent ratio increases from let's say w by r naught to w by r 1 when wages increase labor became becomes expensive when labor becomes expensive we use little of labor and more of land to produce a specific quantity so you see here the t by l ratio has increased we are now using more land as compared to labor so this is how we choose the amount of land to labor ratio the relative prices of the factors of production can also be related to the relative prices of the output as well relative prices of the factors of production are the W and R as in our previous example and then we have uh, two goods cloth and food so their relative prices is mentioned here now let's say if the price of cloth increase what happens this additional cost has to be paid to the inputs remember that we have only two factors of production that is the land and uh, the labor so this additional price has to be distributed either among the land or the labor now it entirely depends on the nature of the good cloth as we suggested was a labor intensive good so when the price of cloth increase wage as compared to rent will increase more but if price of food increase then rent as compared to wage will increase more so the basic idea is when prices rise goods uh, when price rise uh, occurs for a specific good then the factor that is used more intensively will be paid more in this example if pc by pf rises from one position uh, to a higher pc by pf ratio then what will happen in this very specific example our wage to rental ratio will also increase so the graph gives us a relationship between the prices of the input and prices of the output a similar uh, relationship is explained by stolper samuelson theorem uh, which states that if relative prices of good increase then the real wage or real lending to renting rate of the factor used intensively in the production of that good increases while the real wage of the other factor decreases now this is mostly related to the marginal productivity under computation the real wage is equal to the marginal productivity of the factor um, you may be aware of uh, the relationship uh, between the two uh, in economics we say that marginal productivity of labor or any factor uh, will decrease if the uh, real wage w by p or in this case it is w by r if the if w by r decreases then the marginal productivity of labor will increase but if w by r increase the marginal productivity will decrease so it is explained uh, by this relationship
then the marginal productivity of factor typically decreases as the level of that factor used in production increase so this is what we were explaining uh, here is now a combination of uh, both the diagrams uh, one the SS curve that explains the stall for Samuelson relationship and the other uh, shows us the relationship between the factor prices and the use of those factors so basically the wage to rental ratio was common in both we took that on uh, one axis whereas uh, the non-common variables that uh, that have been taken on the uh, x-axis on both sides and uh, let's say uh, this is the origin o uh, means the origin now we can explain the whole story in this single diagram if there is a change in relationship between variables for example if uh, w by r increase or let's say we start with the prices if price of cloth increase what will happen uh, to the wage rental ratio and what will happen to the resource allocation in our example so if price of cloth increase we will move uh towards the left side because it is on the other axis on the negative axis you may say so we increase is shown on the left side as a result consequently our wage to rental ratio will increase because cloth is a labor intensive uh, product and uh, it has more labor therefore wages are paid to labor wages will increase and because of the increase in wage to rental ratio labor becomes expensive also its marginal productivity uh, will decline when labor becomes expensive we will hire more and more land we will substitute land with labor so we will have less labor and more land so the usage of land for both cloth and food will increase let me repeat this whole scenario once again if price of cloth increase wage to rental ratio will increase because cloth is a labor intensive product and when wages increase labor becomes expensive we will hire less labor and we will hire more land in both sectors so this is how we summarize the graph then again we may also try to uh, look at from perspective of uh, the food what if we increase the price of food what will happen now you know that whenever we increase uh, the value of something in denominator when denominator increase the overall value will decrease so when price of food increase wage to rental ratio will actually decrease because rent will increase now and rent is in denominator so the whole value will decrease and then um, again when rent increases land become expensive so the usage of land in both sectors will uh, in both sectors the usage of land will decline so we will move uh, backwards in this scenario if you still do not understand uh, the relationship of uh, prices in denominator if you didn't get it you can watch the video uh, that uh, is on the youtube i will uh, provide you with the link which explains how uh, graphs that involve denominator can be interpreted so you can understand it from there the basic summary of this discussion so far is that we have obtained a theory that predicts changes in the distribution of income when relative price of good changes let's say this uh, change in price occurs because of increase in prices uh, let's say that we had a dollar that was selling at 100 rupees now uh, the dollar has risen to 150 rupees and it has changed the overall price structure in within the country 
So how can this ex uh, affect the income distribution within the country? So we are able to explain such type of situations with the theory. And how can we explain that? An increase in the relative price of uh, cloth to food is predicted to raise the income of workers relative to that of landowners. Um, if we want to generalize it, the price of uh, those goods, uh, when the price of goods increase, it will uh, benefit uh, those factors uh, which are intensively used in it. In the cloth sector, we were using more land so when price of cloth, uh, sorry, we were using more labor. So when price of cloth increase, labor's income will be increased and the landowner's income will be comparatively lower. But if we have an increase in price of food, then what we predict, uh, landowners will be better off. They will have more rent and uh, those uh, and th those who are working the labor uh, class they will not receive much of uh, the increase in prices then raise the ratio of land to labor services the input utilization will also change we will use that input more which cost less when we increase wages then labor is expensive so we will be using more land and it also raises the real income of workers and lower the real income of landowners. This can be explained by the Stolper-Samuelson theorem. This is what Stolper-Samuelson theorem predicts. The total quantity or the total output that we uh, get on the production possibility frontier that comes to us from uh, the various combination of uh, the factors of production and we decided uh, how we choose uh, the intensity or the factors of production that depends upon the wage and rental ratio but we have assumed that there is a limited uh, size of total labor and we have a limited size of uh, total land so how this total land and, and this total labor is allocated for that purpose, uh, we need an Edgeworth box diagram which uh, covers the total land as well as it covers the total labor available in the economy and the distribution of the factors of production. So let us look at the Edgeworth box diagram. Here we have the Edgeworth box diagram. Um, OC shows the origin for the production of clothes and uh, on this axis, on the x-axis, we have allocated labor for the production of cloth and on the y-axis, we have allocated the land used for the production of cloth. If you look at the curvature of uh, the C line and that uh, shows the allocation of resources, uh, or the combination of uh, these two factors for example on this point uh, we have a combination we are using let's say two units of land and five units of labor for production of cloth this is slightly bent towards the uh, labor axis towards the x-axis its tendency is more towards the x-axis let's say we draw another one it is again bent towards the uh, x-axis so this shows the intensivity it shows uh, the uh, labor uh, it shows that cloth is a labor intensive product as we have earlier uh, as we have earlier uh, assumed it if uh, let's say the shape of it was uh, like uh, uh, a more upward inclined towards the uh, y-axis towards land then we would have said that uh, product, uh, production of cloth is uh, land intensive because then it uses more land and less amount of labor the same is true for the food sector as well 
this origin um, let me show you the origin of uh, this is the origin for food sector and an increase in labor for food sector is shown by the red arrow here and similarly an increase in land is shown by tf that will move downwards towards this direction now uh, if you look at uh, the axis the x-axis shows the entire labor available within the economy uh, from the origin up to the lc this is the amount of labor this amount of labor this has been allocated to the cloth sector but what about the other uh, the remaining labor that uh, starts from of to lf that much amount of labor is allocated to food and again if you look at the total land resources our total land resources are uh, on this axis from oc to tc tc is this position the amount of land allocated for the production of cloth and what about the remaining amount of land that land is allocated to the production of food so this is how uh, we discuss the origin of uh, and the origin of both sectors food sector is uh, from the upper corner whereas cloth sector is from the lower corner let's talk about the overall allocation of these resources you see we have uh, line c for cloth sector and line f for food sector the point one that is the equilibrium point where both these lines intersect each other this point decides how much of the uh, resources have been allocated in each sector so this is a we can say an equilibrium uh, point uh, which has total lc labor uh, from oc to lc this amount of labor being allocated for cloth production from oc to tc the land allocated to um, the cloth production of tf lab, uh, land allocated to food production and of lf land uh, this is the labor allocated to food production so all the resources available to us have been allocated what determines the slope of these line uh, as we have discussed earlier the resource allocation the intensity of uh, any factor that depends upon the wage rate and the rental uh, ratio if wage and rental ratio increases then the uh, land to labor ratio increases and if that ratio increases uh, we may shift the actual curves because of the changes in the factor prices so the actual the actual uh, slope of these two depend upon the factor prices from the discussion so far we understand that how total resources are allocated but now is uh, another interesting question what will happen if we increase the economy's resources either we discover uh, some more land we create dams and uh, through those dams we are able to have more agricultural land or there is an impulse of labor from outside and we have more labor resources available at hand so how this can change our uh, overall allocation of resources and then our overall production the question and uh, let me repeat this question what happens uh, to the overall output and to the overall allocation of resources when there is an increase in any factor of production so to answer their question we uh, use another theorem here that is called Lipsinski theorem Lipsinski theorem uh, says that if we hold the output prices constant 
the uh, prices of the final product remains constant what happens the factor of production increase then supply of good that uses this factor intensively increase and supply of the other good decrease uh, let me repeat it once again if we hold prices of goods constant and factors increase any specific factor increase then the supply of that good increase which use this factor intensively and the other good uh, will reduce in quantity and uh, again um, this proposition is called Rezinski theorem so we can use the help of the Edgeworth box diagram once again and we can show it through Edgeworth box diagram uh, how, what Rebzinski mean by this uh, type of change this type of proposition here you see we have the same old diagram but with a slight change if you look at uh, the origin of OC it is uh, on the same spot but the OF origin that was uh, that we had initially is on OF1 these are our initial origins for the Edgeworth box diagram what happened now in this scenario we have an increase in the uh, production of uh, an increase in the overall land resources this much addition has occurred in the land resources so what will happen with such type of changes uh, we will now have a new origin OF2 and uh, we will have now a new equilibrium at point 0.2 this was uh, our initial equilibrium at point 0.1 and at point 0.2 we have new equilibrium and what happened here uh, our initial resources were uh, from O F2 to up to LF1 this was our initial allocation of labor resources for the production of uh, food but now we have more resources allocated to the production of food more labor has been allocated to the production of food now if you uh, see uh, labor uh, factors has not changed the overall labor resources has remained constant only land resources has increased still we are allocating more resources to food this is what we have said in Rebsensky theorem uh, land resources increase food was a land intensive uh, output so we allocate more resources to land this additional land also needs certain combination of labor it need, needs to be combined with certain resources of labor to produce the additional output and where will that labor come from uh, that labor will come from the closed sector initial allocation uh, of labor in the closed sector will decline so the additional labor will come from the closed sector similarly we will also use some additional uh, land from the closed sector as well the labor that uh, we have taken from uh, the closed sector also utilize certain amount of land uh, that is given by this distance and this is the measure of land that now comes with the additional labor that has transferred from the closed sector so overall uh, land resources in the food sector has increased uh, in two positions one this is the first increase and this is the second increase of labor in the food sector and uh, uh, this is an increase in the labor but at the same time this is a decrease in labor for cloth sector so this is the impact of change in factor of production what happens to this increase in land in the overall uh, output we had our initial production possibility frontier this is our uh, PPF the initial and we have a second uh, production possibility frontier if you look at 
the increase this is not uh, an equal increase the shift is not equal change in the output of uh, cloth is uh, smaller as compared to change in the overall output of food why is this so again this is because of the factor intensity intensity uh, food is land intensive so when we have increased land more and more uh, uh, more and uh, we have more output in the food sector and uh, since cloth is labor intensive change in uh, an increase in uh, an increase in land will not increase the overall output the overall production possibility in the cloth sector by that much amount so in cloth sector we have a smaller increase and in the food sector we have a higher increase but this increase does not show what we are going to produce we are again going to produce on the same slope that we have, were producing initially the slope does not change why because Rebzinski theorem uh, says that the prices of the output will remain constant whereas in practical it may change because of the overall supply and demand and overall supply is changing but uh, according to the theorem it remains constant so what is happening now uh, we are having uh, the second equilibrium on the same slope but you see that the overall output in closed sector has decreased because of the allocation of resources whereas uh, in the food sector it has increased from qf1 to qf2 in the cloth sector it has decreased from qc1 to qc2 um, there uh, students sometimes get confused with uh, the production possibility frontier and the actual output the actual production possibility frontier increases for both goals why because we have more resources we can produce uh, more of both goals but the actual output in the economy decreases why because we allocate the resources of uh, one sector uh, of the sector to we allocate the resources of cloth sector to the uh, food sector here is a brief summary an economy with high ratio of land to labor service is predicted to have high output of food relative to cloth and low price of food relative to cloth then it will be relatively efficient uh, uh, we may say that have comparative advantage in food and it will be relatively uh, inefficient in producing of cloth an economy is predicted to be relatively efficient at producing goods that are intensive in the factor of production in which the country is uh, relatively well endowed so the summary of uh, the production in an economy it entirely depends upon the availability of resources if certain resources are available in a country uh, and they will be used in mostly in those sectors uh, which have uh, which use these resources more intensively and when they use those resources intensively they will be efficient in the production of that specific good for example saudi arabia will be efficient in the production of petroleum products whereas pakistan has abundant lands so it is it has comparative advantage in the production of food and uh, some countries like um, let's say japan japan is um, uh, has uh, and uh, has its uh, has more capital so it's a capital intensive country it will use to produce those goods which requires more capital like and uh, in industrial goods so uh, the hacksher roland theory basically explains uh, why certain countries produce uh, certain commodities so i hope uh, you have learned a lot from this lecture we will continue in the next section with the trade we will discuss how trade happens uh, in the presence of uh, such type of production 
uh, we will explain trade in the Hacksher-Orlin model perspective. Thank you very much.